So in part two of this, I just wanted to walk through, um, show a little idea how the GPU code works. So in the previous video, we talked a little, we talked about a simple algorithm. It's got a 10 million long triplet input vector where it basically calculates the logs of each of the three parameters in the triplet and multiplies them and puts that in a result array. So we start with a 10 million long three value wide input array and we end up with a 10 million long single, um, kind of like if you're doing a feature calculation, right? So would be one use case. So we talked earlier about how if you ran that same code on a single CPU with no JIT, um, single CPU that has been compiled with Numba compiler and the um, for same version of that, if you parallelize using the JIT, uh, the loop, so that would actually use as many threads as made sense on the machine you're running on. So the other way, to, another way to do this is actually to use uh, like a NVIDIA graphics card with this, the CUDA, CUDA library, and actually the JIT, the NUMBA compiler actually supports CUDA out of the box. So it turns out you can actually take your code that you wrote for a single CPU or JIT or parallelized and with some changes, you can actually push that into a graphics processor. Now, you gotta realize whenever you take something off the CPUs and you throw it somewhere else, you've got a high cost for data transfer, right? So you gotta do enough calculations to actually make it worthwhile. And I don't know what that number is, but you gotta do enough math that the GPU with, in this case, my GPU has over 2000 processors that those 2000 processors, their speed of using 2000 processors instead of the 30 on my machine, um, that that data transfer, you gotta know enough calculation to overcome the data transfer cost. So with the program I did, this algorithm here, it turns out on my machine, it doesn't actually pay, right? Um, if, I jit, if I were to run a Python code and then put it on the GPU, it looks amazing. But if I just use the JIT and then run the parallel driver for this algorithm, I actually get better time. But if I did more math, the GPU would actually be faster, right? And for real large data sets, production size data sets in some places, um, then that would be worth it uh, because you'd be doing enough math on those. But you got to watch it, right? Because so the way this works is I have a driver module. And what the driver does is it basically calculates the number of execution threads. It goes out and it looks at the GPU and it figures out how many GPUs we've got and how much memory they've got on them and we calculate the number of threads that we're gonna run. So I've got 10 million executions that are gonna happen in so many threads, right? On my machine, that'll be like 2,000 threads. So 10 million go through a 2,000 funnel. So the first thing we do is we calculate that. Then we push the data to the GPU, right? So this is, um, basically it's all gotta go from CPU memory to GPU memory. And then what I did after that is I create a result space. So I push 30 minute, 30 minute, 30 million float 64s into the GPU memory. And then I create 10 million result locations. And then what we do is we call a map function. So I basically have a simple function that knows how to do, actually it's the same function that I used here, where basically it runs this math. We map, oops, sorry, my bad. We map that calculation across the GPUs. They will all execute um, 2,000 GPUs, 10 million um, number. You got to divide it by that. You got to figure out how many it's going to execute on each one. They will all take to do their calculation in their subset of the data, put it in the result array. Then we have to collect the remote results. We got to pull the data back. So we have to push 30 million numbers up and we got to push 10 million numbers back. And then we aggregate the results, which is super fast, right? So if we look at that, so this is on a Linux machine where I got my GPU installed. Um, so I'm gonna look at this code real quick. I'll just give you an example. I'm actually using Visual Studio code here. So I'm just gonna set the zoom up for the, there we go. So everything gets bigger. It's not like just zooming the text window. So I'm gonna make this a little longer too. All right, so what are we doing? I'm just going to show you the CUDA demo, which I showed before. I had shown the core part of this in part one. So in part two, so one of the things that happens here with the CUDA, with the GPU, right? Basically, you jam it all into memory, and then 
you call and then you map a function call and the map we're going to do is actually going to be this calc on gpu so we tell it to to push that compile that into cuda code push it in there and execute it now what we need to do because we have all these gpus running in parallel you can't just add stuff to an array right or like put it somewhere we got to know kind of we can kind of guess by the thread id basically by the index into the number of executions that need to be done we can actually calculate where the location is goes for this data so i have 10 million rows being calculated into 10 million results so this just all you have to do is to put this on the gpu is put at cuda calculate right um and in this one yeah that's all i did so you can play some other games too you can have host functions and you can have um device functions and so some of them can be called from the host GPU. This one's actually a host function, so it can be called from the host GPU. I'm sorry, the host CPU, right? If it was a device function, then you would only be able to call it from some other function already on the GPU. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, and the only other thing is if it's a host function, you can't have a return value. So that's why we push the 10 million results. Well, that's not the only reason. So all this thing does is it calculates how many iterations we're going to do. Um, it tries to figure out how many threads per block and how many blocks per grid, right? And in our case, I've only got one grid. You could actually put this across multiple cards. So there's some notes in here on how to make that happen. So we figure out how many uh, blocks per grid we're going to do. And um, so we basically push the parameters to the device. And then we create the result array and this these are actually futures you get back so when you push this to the device you get the future to the data in the remote device it's actually asynchronous also when you create an array in the device it actually gives you a future back to that array because it's still got to operate on it and then later you'll retrieve it and then i'll i take this calculate and this is kind of weird to me so it's an iterator basically so you can see this doesn't take the location or anything, just take where's the result, what's the iteration count, what are all the parameters. Well, it turns out when I calculate this, I'm actually going to pass the blocks per grid and the threads per block. The way this thing gets calculated, it'll know what node and where it needs to go. And then I just pass it the parameters, right? And um, so the parameters here that it's going to get call is actually the array of 30 million, one, 10 million uh, times three. And when it maps this out, this thing actually, uh, you know what, it, you can see here where I've got to go into that same array, right? And then the only other thing is because we had the results on the device, right, which is a future for the result, um, we can go back and just say copy that host and we get the result and we're done. And that's really all there is to it. I can run this. Uh, can I run it? Yes, I can. I can run this. I'll do this the easy way. We will just take this up here and I will do right mouse no I won't I don't even have to do that I can do control f5 because I'm in visual code boom I'll actually run that without debugging so you can see these are the grid numbers and I had it do uh, the CPU numbers from part one just so you can see what it looks like and it takes 13 seconds on this 2 gigahertz machine with 30 thread 16 cores it takes 0.08 so the grid code is actually slower here, but that's because we're not doing enough calculations, right? We gotta, it's to justify that big data movement from on CPU memory to off and all that latency, you gotta be doing more calculations. So I hope that was good. I hope this um, demo, like I said, you can go to CalcCore to see how the code works on the CPU itself. And you can go to CUDA demo and it will actually show you the code that we ran on the GPU, which I just showed you there. So I hope that's great. And uh, 